it shall have to, it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof. Come on. And so it shall be joined together. Okay, now let me tell you something. If you if you try to look uh, for what Ammon garment looked like, um, and you follow Esau, you're a damn fool. It ain't look nothing like that. Okay, Esau try to go according to description and try to recreate. Okay, their imagination can't come up with it. The Lord had to put the spirit of wisdom and he had to give the vision. Do everybody understand that? Right. So you got some people that think that they're going to dress like Aaron dressed and they have no idea what Aaron even looked like. Do everybody understand that? Right. Based on going off of Esau's vision. Do everybody understand that? Right. Esau don't got the vision. Do everybody understand that? Right. Everybody got that? Right. Y'all ever see what Esau dress up as a priest and try to say that this is what Aaron looked like? You ever see what they try to say a, 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 a breastplate with all those stones looked like? Look like crap. Right. Okay, they don't have the vision. That's why the the, the priest today, right, right? right. How they look? Hey. No, I ain't talking about in here. I ain't talking. I'm talking about them false priests. Okay, I'm talking about the Pope man. They're trying to look holy. I, <laughs> I don't see the difference between what they wear and what the Ku Klux Klan wears. Right. I don't see the difference. Little bo little little borders. That's about it. The sheets that's thrown over them. That's it. Okay. Read on. Tell them what verse you're in. Verse 8. Come on. And the curious girdle of the ephod. Curious again means skillful, um, resourceful. Um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, clever. Um, so they, they had to, they were resourceful. That means that they, they knew how to put things together and make it look good together. Do everybody understand that? Uh, Read on. Which is upon it. Come on. Shall be of the same according to the work thereof. Read on. Even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet. Okay, so people got the color and think they could do something. You put on gold, blue, scarlet, and purple and throw it together, it look like throw up. <laughs> it's a way that this stuff has to be, you know, it's all in order. Do everybody understand that? Uh, Okay, read on. And fine twine linen. Okay, so let's go back to Numbers chapter 8. Numbers chapter 8. Now, this is the first time we're in Numbers 8. Numbers chapter 8, verse 8. Read that for me, please. Then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering. Even fine flour mingled with oil. And another young bullock. Is that numbers? Where you at? Numbers what? Numbers chapter 8. Okay, eight. I think it's numbers. Where we was at? Where we was in number 7 or 8? Oh. Numbers chapter 7. What do you got? Numbers chapter 7, Salaki. Before we go there, back, back there, I was in, um, see I lost my point, see that? I was supposed to be proving the sprinkling, right? Yeah. Um, Leviticus, where was that? Leviticus what? Chapter 8. Yeah, Perfect. Leviticus chapter 7, let's go back. Leviticus chapter 7. Leviticus 8. Listen, okay, well, see that's why I need an armor bearer. Yes, <laughs> Leviticus uh, uh, 8. Yes, sir. Let's go back to Leviticus 8. What verse did we leave off at? Verse 7, sir. Leviticus chapter 8, verse 7. Read it. And he put upon him the coat, and girded him with the girdle, and clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod upon him, Read on. and girded him with the curious girdle of the ephod, Read on. and bound it unto him therewith. Read on. And he put the breastplate upon him. He did what? Put the breastplate upon him. Read on. Also, he put in the breastplate the urim and the thummim. The urim and the dirim. Okay. See? Once you, that's the danger of going to precepts because then you come to something else that you got to deal with. Um, I'm going to skip over that. Um, Y'all know what Urim, Urim and Durham is, right? That came up enough. Y'all don't know what Urim and Durham is? Read that again. And he put upon the breastplate upon him also, he put in the breastplate the Urim and the Thummim. Okay, the Urim and the Durham um, was basically um, the Lord speaks to uh, uh, Israel in many different ways. Um, usually to the, 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 the top uh, among the nation of Israel. Uh, the Urim and Durham was uh, um, t uh, tr entrusted to the high priest of Israel. Um, and it was one of the ways that the Lord speaks. Um, he speaks in dreams. He speaks in visions. He tells you that. 
Um, he also speak by Yerm and by Therm. There's enough scriptures for us to go over that. Let's go to First Samuel's first chapter 28. And Yerm and Therm was a device that was given to the uh, high priest of Israel um, that the Lord gave his instructions through. Um, they would be able to ask questions to the Lord, uh, specific questions, and get specific answers. So whenever kings had problems within the nation of Israel, they would call the high priest of Israel, and they would ask the high priest of Israel specific things to inquire by God uh, for uh, uh, specific things. So rather than praying um, and waiting to go to sleep for a dream or getting get in the trance for a vision, they would also have the Urim and Thurim to be able to um, inquire to God. Um, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 28. And let's show you that. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 5 on down. Read that, please. Hey, Let me get another reader so I can get through this quick. Give me Exodus 28 as well. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 5. Read that, please. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. Read on. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. Neither by dreams. Neither by what? By dreams. Okay, so that's one way the Lord speaks. The scripture says the Lord speaketh once, he speaketh twice, but yet man perceiveth it not. Okay, the Lord can come in a dream, in a vision by night, like the um, uh, prophet Job said. Do everybody understand that? Um, and seal your instructions. But he didn't answer Saul by dreams. Read on. Nor by Urim. Nor by Urim, okay, um, which is the device that was given to the high priest of Israel. Um, so specific questions could be asked. And the Lord will come back with a specific answer. But if he don't want to come back with an answer like with, with Saul, there will be no answer. Do everybody understand that? Uh, Read on. Nor by prophets. Neither did he send him a prophet. So Saul was just cut off. Everybody understand that? Uh, Let's go to the book of uh, Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. And we're going to start at verse 29. And then give me Numbers chapter 27. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 29. Read that please. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart. Okay, so what I'm giving you is answers to questions. Answers to questions. Every time we come in contact with a question, I'm going to just put it out there and I'm going to answer it. Read it one more time. Verse 29. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment. Why is it called the breastplate of judgment? Because God's will was declared from that blessed plate because the Urim and Therm was in the blessed plate. The breast plate. Do everybody understand that? Breast meaning chest. Chest plate. It was a, 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 a piece of garment that went over the chest of the high priest. Do everybody understand that? Read it one more time. Verse 29. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment. The names of the children of Israel was on the, the different stones that was in the blessed plate of judgment. Bear it means to carry it. That he would carry the name of the children of Israel on a blessed plate of judgment. Why is it called the blessed plate of judgment? Because God's judgment will be made known from the Urim and Durm that was put in the breastplate. Read on. Upon his heart. Read on. When he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. For a memorial before the Lord continually. That is all about Israel. To keep Israel constantly on his mind or constantly before his face rather. Read on. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment. Read on. The Urim and the Thummim. Read on. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart. Read on. When he goeth in before the Lord. Read on. And Aaron shall bear the judgment. Aaron of the, shall do what? Bear the judgment. That mean carry the judgment. Carry the judgment. So what was the Urim and Durham? The Urim and Durham was the judgment judgment of God. It was the will of God being made known through that device. Do everybody understand that? Again, let me repeat it. What was the Urim and Thurm? What it's telling us here, it was God's will being made known through that device. That's why I called it. Read it one more time. Verse 30. Read it again. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment. Read on. The Urim and the Thurm. The Urim and the Thurm. Now, this is something that, again, you will never see um, um, uh, a depiction of, a recreation of, because they have no idea what it was and what it looks like. Do everybody understand that? Uh, and the Lord uh, wanted that way because he didn't want nobody grabbing a cut now and be like, you know, Lord God, speak to me. Okay, everybody understand that? Uh, that what they will do, they call it the uh, Holy Grail, right? And you got people going crazy over cups, right? 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 And putting cups and candles and all. So the Lord kept that something. The Lord can speak through whatever he wants. If the Lord want to, he can speak through this book right now. Do you everybody understand that? How you know that for sure? Y'all should be able to answer that real quick. How you know that for sure? I'm trying not to take all day. I'm rushing. How you know that for sure? 
The, the short answer is because he's God. He could do anything. Okay. Then when you go on the scriptures, you see he spoke through a donkey. You ever understand? You see a hand appeared and he just wrote on the wall and spoke through that. Do you ever, he could just speak any kind of way he wants to. So this was a way for the Lord to communicate and he gave it to Aaron. He had Aaron put it in the blessed plate of judgment and his will was made known through Urim and Durham. Read it again. Verse 30. Go ahead. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment Read on. the Urim and the Thummim. Read on. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart. Read on. When he goeth in before the Lord and Aaron shall bear the judgment. Aaron shall what? Bear the judgment. Carry the judgment. So what does that mean? That the Urim and Thurm was the judgment of God. The Urim and Thurm was God's will being made known through that device. Read on. Of the children of Israel upon his heart. Read on. Before the Lord continually. Let's go to Numbers chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27 verse 18. And um, Numbers chapter 27 verse 18. So this is what... This should give you a pretty good understanding on Urim and Durham, all these scriptures put together. Numbers chapter 27, verse 18. Read that. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit. Read on. And lay thine hand upon him. Okay, the Spirit of God was in him. And now the Lord is saying, uh, the Spirit of God was in Joshua. The Lord is telling Moses to lay your hands upon Joshua. This was supposed to be done in the sight of the people so the people can know that the Lord has accepted Joshua as their next leader. Do everybody understand that? Uh. So the Lord don't leave the people in the dark. He wanted the people to, to know. It was a no fighting over who's next. He wanted the people to know who he actually chose next. Read on. And sent him before Eleazar the priest. Okay, so this is the high priest of the nation of Israel. Read on. And before all the congregation. Read on. And give them a charge in their sight. Okay, so again, this was done in front of everybody so there could be no confusion that Joshua was to replace Moses. That Joshua was to rise up as the leader in Moses' place because Moses was getting ready to go back into the spirit world. He was getting ready to die. Read on. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him. Read on. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Okay, so Moses was to put some of his honor. In other words, there was not a great, uh, not a prophet in Israel since Moses, like Moses. Do everybody understand that? Uh. Um, from that time all the way up to Jesus Christ. Everybody understand that uh, so would, would put some of thy honor upon him meaning start telling the nation of Israel that this is who the Lord is going to chose this is what this is who the Lord has chosen this is how the Lord is going to work through him like he was going like he was working through me but he ain't going to work through him exactly that's why I said some of the honor he ain't going to do everything with Joshua like he did with me like he ain't going to come speak to Joshua face to face do everybody understand that uh, um, now, now let's go to the book of Ezra's chapter 2 Ezra's chapter 2 Ezra's chapter 2. Before we go to Ezra's chapter 2, what verse was that? Verse 20? Yes, sir. Uh, go back there. Tell them where you at again. Numbers chapter 27, verse 20. Um, read verse 21. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim. Yeah, right. So, again, I went there and didn't about to leave before I get the purpose of why I went there. Read it again. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest. Okay, so some of the honor, that's what I got caught up in, you know, taking me somewhere else, clearly show you that the Lord wasn't going to be speaking to Joshua face to face like he was speaking to um, Moses because Eleazar the priest had to go to Urim and Thurm to get answers for Joshua. Do everybody understand that? Right. Read it one more time. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest. Okay, that's the high priest who in the breastplate had Urim and Thurm. So it's letting you know again that Urim and Thurm was the divine uh, uh, will of God was shown through Urim and Thurm. And the priest, the high priest of the nation of Israel, the kings and the leaders of the nation of Israel came to the high priest and they asked God specific questions and they actually got specific answers coming from Urim and Thurm. Read that one more time. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest. Read on. Who shall ask counsel for him. Read on. After the judgment of Urim. Yeah, should I go up? Should I go to war? This is what David did a lot. David was dealing with the high priest and was dealing with Urim and Thurm. So when you hear stuff like David says, should I pursue? And the answer came back, pursue. That was through the high priest of Israel in Urim and Thurm. A direct answer to a direct question. 
Everybody understand that? All right, let's read on. Before the Lord. Come on. At his word shall they go out. And at what? At his word shall they go out. At Joshua's word. So the people were supposed to understand. If Joshua told him to do something, that he inquired of the Lord, he got counsel from the Lord, and the Lord told him to do it, so they were supposed to follow what Joshua was saying the same way they followed what Moses was saying. That's why the Lord did this in the sight of all the people. Read on. And at his word they shall come in. Read on. Both he and all the children of Israel with him. Read on. Even all the congregation. Read on. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Read on. And he took Joshua. Read on. And set him before Eleazar the priest. Read on. And before all the congregation. Read on. And he laid his hands upon him. Read on. And gave him a charge. Read on. As the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Okay.